Shalom, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Now, I was thinking, what does it take for a Jew, for a person to once in a while recognize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem is tapping him on the shoulder and telling him, hey, I'm right over here. I watched the video of an officer that was called to duty on October 7th when that terrorist attack happened in Israel. <clears throat> and in his own words, he says he's a secular Jew. The night before, he had been partying the whole night, so he was sleeping in late. And he wakes up, he's woken up by his wife, looking at his phone, he has tons of messages, and his uh, superior officers are calling him for help. Gets into his car, drives to the south, carrying with him the only weapons he has, his personal weapons, two handguns and some ammunition. It's him and his friend. And they're cornered behind a wall. And finally, they're running out of ammunition. They have no more ammunition left. They have hundreds of gunmen shooting at them, throwing grenades at them, uh, shooting RPGs at them. These are his own words. And he felt these are the last moments of their lives. They had no more opportunities to get out from hiding, to go find guns on the ground from, uh, as he says in his own words, he said he had to take guns from other bodies. And he's stuck there. And he says his friend, this guy, turns to him and he says, listen, if we get out of this alive, I'm going to keep Shabbat fully. מכמות ירי פסיבית שזה הולך ומתרחק ממך. Now here's the crazy part. He says, I myself, I don't keep Shabbat, I don't keep, I, I don't keep the laws, but I believe in God. But my friend, this guy, to put it in his words, he barbecues on Yom Kippur. He has nothing to do with religion or God. And he turns to him and he says, I'm going to keep Shabbat. And he's like, I was shocked. But within seconds of him saying that, we notice the sound of the gunman is getting farther and farther and farther away until they just left them alone. Completely. Miraculously. They were in the middle of a gunfight. And he just left them. And he says now it's been weeks and his friend has kept Shabbat even though it's been very, very difficult for him. And he himself and his family have started keeping Shabbat. And he takes off his hat and he says, look, I'm not a religious Jew. I'm not even wearing a kippah. But listen, I recognized something at those moments. And here's where I personally got a piece of musar, I got a piece of rebuke from someone that claims he himself is not religious and he just started keeping Shabbat. Here's what he says. He says, you know, you hear all the time people asking, where was God during the Shoah? Where was God during the Holocaust? Where was God on October 7th? Where was God? אז חבר'ה, אני רוצה להגיד באמת לכולם, תפסיקו איפה היה אלוהים בשואה, איפה היה אלוהים בשביעי לעשירי. הוא תמיד היה. איפה אתם הייתם? He says, I came to a recognition. I came to the realization that why don't we think this way? Why don't we think that once in a while God is saying, I'm here, where are you? I told you where you need to be, you're just not where you need to be. I'm exactly where I said I would be. It's enough of us blaming God for everything and asking where He was when things go wrong. How about once in a while asking ourselves, where am I? Why aren't I closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Because once in a while, He's tapping us on the shoulder and saying, hey, I was there. Where were you? I've been there the whole time. Where have you been? I thought that was a huge wake-up call. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu help us. May God help us always hear His calls and never need stories like this to wake us up. Baruch Amen.